right. So, we will as we said we will be looking into effect of trees on the en environment. Now, uh, one issue which we are not really looking into the quantification of amount of carbon dioxide which the tree absorbs, this we are not looking into, but what we are looking into, how does it change the microclimatic features such as humidity or temperature, that is what we are looking into. So, two things happens with trees actually, the transpiration and evaporation. No? So, trees basically there will be evaporation from the trees and transpiration. So, we call it evapotranspiration, this process is called evapotranspiration, right. So, evaporation takes place from the surrounding ground, you know surrounding ground and there is a transpiration from the green trees itself, both together you know both together or there will be evaporation from the green surfaces as well and there will be course some runoff, some goes to the ground water, some goes to the ground water right. So, evaporation is a process whereby liquid water is converted to water vapor and removed from the evaporating surface which could be ground as well as the plant surfaces right. So, transpiration consists of vaporization of liquid water contained in the plant tissues right and the vapor removal to the atmosphere. So, in the process in the biological process there are water evaporation takes place from the plant and you know you need water for plant survival right it is nutri nutrients it picks up and this from the plant tissue there is water evaporation that takes place. So, that we call as transpiration. So, these crops or if we say trees even predominantly lose their water through what you call stomat, stomata. These are small openings in the plant leaf through which gases and water vapor pass. So, there is evaporation from the plant also because the water is needed for carrying the nutrients right and then water is also evaporated out from the plant surfaces. So, the combination of these two separate process whereby water is lost on one hand from the soil surface by evaporation and on the other hand from the crop of by transpiration is referred as evapotranspiration. So, obviously, what will be its effect? It will tend to increase the relative humidity locally. And since the evaporation is occurring, it would reduce down the temperature, it will reduce down the temperature, right. So, we can write it like this delta S is the storage, you know, P is the P is the precipitation, the rain or whatever it is, and Q is the stream flow runoff and then ground water recharge is D. So, this is what it is. So, evapotranspiration is this part through which water is lost to the atmosphere, but then it does cooling. While this Q is actually not really much useful in the sense that it straight away runs off. So, it does not take part in anything else and delta S will be the storage in the ground water system. So, evaporation power of the atmosphere is expressed by what is called reference crop evaporation, evapotranspiration. Now, this has been modeled. So, we can actually model this process for agricultural engineers actually they have done it actually. So, they take a crop preference, you know crop evapotranspiration. As we shall see this, this model if you can apply for example, you can actually compute as you shall see uh, what is the likely relative humidity change because of the green trees around this place. The example I will have is of Humayun stone where there are plenty of trees around the monument and it showed that there is a reduction in the temperature compared to measured temperature in 
one of the station, atmospheric station like Savdarjang Airport, which is not very far off. Measured temperature is lower, but measured relative humidity is higher, relative humidity is higher. So, this is the whole purpose. Purpose is to see what are the basically the physics or physical mechanism behind this kind of thing, so that you can actually look into any other, any other place as you want. Now, agricultural engineers have actually used this kind of concept before for the purpose of crops. So, the idea is borrowed from crop, right. So, crop evapotranspiration. transpiration, so they, they define something called standard or reference crop condition for which the standard evaporation is E t 0, thus right. Now, crop evaporation transpiration under standard condition refers to the evaporating demand from crop that are grown in large field under optimum soil water condition and excellent environmental condition. So, and achieve full production under the given, given climatic condition. So, basically for most conducive condition for standard crop this has been established and then for any other crop and any other condition you have some multiplying factors to find out the amount of evaporation say millimeter per day or whatever it is. So, if you look at first you know both energy balance as well as the, so basically this is the precipitation radiation temperature wind speed humidity. Now, reference crop is a specific type of crop with a given height and leaf condition which is well watered grass as you shall see you know and later on 12 it is actually 12 centimeter high and that is what we call as standard condition under which we define as evapotranspiration 0 I mean oh, you know subscript. So, basic the standard this is multiplied by a factor. So, E t 0 multiplied by a factor for well watered other crop not the grass then you get E t c. So, that is the standard one in fact for type given type of crop and then if water and environmental stress is there that means water is not optimal or right kind of you know well watered optimal econ, you know agronomic condition if it is not that then you multiply by another factor. So, this is E t c adjusted you know that is that is how it is done. So, for you know this for, for crop this is done right. So, by defining the reference crop as a hypothetical crop with an assumed height of 0 0.12 meter that means 12 centimeter and having a surface resistance. Now, I think I will come to this statement later on let us look at this diagram let us look at this diagram something like this. I have this height of the crop grass 12 centimeter solar radiation falls onto it and this is the albedo part of it goes out you know. So, this is what is falling solar radiation is falling onto it. Now, there is evaporation occurring from here. So, there is a resistance offered, there is a resistance offered which is in 1 over velocity term. So, velocity is meter cube per meter square, velocity is nothing but flow per unit area right. So, 1 over that flow is the resistance that is what we are talking of. So, there is a resistance offered here and this re resistance to this evaporation because it is a flowing vapor is flowing. So, what reference level weather measurement is done at 2 meter height. So, temperature relative humidity etcetera are measured at 2 meter height for 12 centimeter or 0.12 meter crop and there is one resistance here as well which is assumed to be 70 second per meter 1 over velocity. So, this is you know this from experiment empirical observation they would have found out and this resistance from here to there is actually resistance of the air, this is resistance of the crop itself and this is given as 208 divided by velocity 
air, air velocity, if the air velocity here is high, obviously more evaporation would occur, resistance will be less. So, that is how that is how, so that is how it is done and albedo is taken as 0.23 closely resembling the evaporation of an extension surface of green gra grass of uniform height actively growing and adequately watered the you know FAO Pen Penman Montiet method is developed based on this actually. So, this model right federal agricultural organization because it is US American Society of Civil Engineers they did it. So, this model was developed based on this model was developed based on this for reference crop with uh, measured you know accepted resistance value from the soil to the crop and resistance value from crop to the 2 meter standard height right. So, this is what it is. So, standardized height for wind speed temperature and humidity at 2 meter and crop height of this the aerodynamic and surface resistance has become. So, first is the surface resistance another is aerodynamic resistance. So, R s n so, R a is taken as 208 by u 2 as shown in the diagram and the u t is the wind speed at 2 meter height and R s is 70. So, this this ratio is useful somewhere we shall see that resistance you know 1 divided by 1 plus resistance of these two. So, this is this is Penman Montiet model actually this is the Penman Montiet model. So, this model can give you the evapotranspiration under standard condition right it can give you under standard condition and once you know the standard condition for your type of crop which is also they have listed down for what sort of crop what should be the factor k and then you can apply that and find it out right ok. So, this is the basic principle. So, right so this is what I said and R n that is the normal radiation we are using R n here the I mean they are using R n the net notation I have kept it R n is the normal radiation g is the energy available per unit area and expressed all these are expressed in mega joules per meter square per day you know. So, if you look at it in this diagram this is the normal radiation supposing I am calling it R n here of course, it is shown as R s as the solar radiation. So, this and g is the energy available per unit because some of this radiation will be reflected back some will be available because the when evaporation is occurring energy must come latent heat of evaporation must come. So, if radiation is known to us some of this energy will be actually absorbed for evaporation purpose it will be consumed in evaporation purpose and some will be any anyway, you know some will be reflected back uh, uh, and you know will go on heating and things like that. So, to convert the energy units for radiation equivalent of water depth. So, you want to find out how much is the water depth right the latent heat of evaporation taken as 2450 kilo joules per kg. So, radiation corresponding to radiation in mega joules per meter square per day I want to find out how much is the evaporation corresponding to the radiation in millimeter per day because it will be evaporating from the some depth right. So, radiation mega joules per day divided by 2450 latent heat of evaporation. So, if I know the total energy coming in this divided by latent heat of evaporation will give me the quantum of water that can evaporate from the radiation received quantum because after all if the evaporation is to occur the sunlight is also needed uh, you know the energy is needed in order that evaporation takes place right. So, if mega joule per meter square per day is the amount of radiation this divided by 2450 2450 this is in kilo joules per kg divided by 1000 will be this is how it is you know. So, this this is this this is mega joules I multiply by 10 to the power 3 I get kilo joules and this is 2450. So, that much kg of 
water will be this multiplying factor I am trying to find out. I am trying to find out a multiplying factor this value multiplied by the radiation. So, whatever radiation I get multiply by factor that is what will give me millimeter per per day. So, radiation is this is in mega joules per meter square per day multiplied by 1000 divided by 2450 that much kg of water or moisture will evaporate this multiplied by for 1 unit mega joule per meter square per day. For unit mega joule per meter square per day this much kg of moisture will evaporate right. So, per meter square anyway this is per meter square so mega joule so kg per meter square will come per day. Now, this multiplied by 10 to the power 3 because I want to convert this meter into this is this will be in kg kg divided by meter 1000 will give me in meter cube because density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So, this will give me meter depth of water that would be actually evaporating for the amount of radiation that is coming in per unit radiation. Now, this if I get I get something like this 10 to the power 3 you know so millimeter if I want to convert I will multiply this factor by 10 to the power 3. So, I get 1 by 2.45 which is 0 0.408 millimeter square per meter square. So, for unit radiation unit mega joules per meter square per day the amount of water which will evaporate is 0 0.408 thickness if it is fully saturated if it is fully saturated 0 0.408. Now, this comes into the equation actually this comes into equation you see this is 408 now it has got two component as you can see this equation this is the standard standardized reference crop evaporation this is what they have developed this equation. So, this is this R n is the amount of radiation that is coming in G is going out into the ground. So, G is the soil heat flux density whatever is absorbed by the soil R n is the total coming out per unit area a part of it will be absorbed by the soil remaining radiation multiplied by 408 is the millimeter per day, but evaporation also requires you know vapor pressure difference evaporation will occur depending upon relative humidity or vapor pressure difference because if the vapor pressure difference is not there evaporation cannot take place is so a full, fully saturated. So, this is the slope of the saturation of vapor pressure temperature right. So, slope of the saturation because moisture is saturated and there the evaporation is occurring at a given outside temperature. So, this is this gives me this is this will be you know second part deals with velocity second part this is so this is the evaporation that is occurring at the surface itself at the plant surface itself and this is related to the velocity somewhere above if the it will depend upon the resistance also the pressure difference between that point and the top surface 2 meter at 2 meter. So, E s and E a saturation vapor pressure at 1.5 to 2 meter height 2 meter height now I am considering. So, first stage is at the surface itself evaporation will occur 12 mill centimeter thick moisture I mean grass where the evaporation will occur and that would occur because of the radiation coming in minus the radiation that is going into the ground that would cause evaporation. Second thing is after that also further evaporation will proceed from there to the 2 meter height depending upon the relative humidity at the 2 meter height. So, it is taken as 1.5 to 2 meter height you know T mean temperature at T is coming T would be coming here that is in absolute term and gamma is again the gamma is psychrometric constant related to vapor pressure difference to moisture content you know KPA pressure I mean vapor pressure to per degree centigrade. So, this is uh, I, I do not think I have talked about the psychrometric chart earlier in this course, but does not matter we will not get into that details, but what we understand is in a psychrometric chart absolute humidity relative humidity moisture you know dry bulb temperature or temperature these are all related through psychrometric chart or you know do at different degrees of saturation what you call a different relative humidity slope of that curve is you know used. So, here this is the this is the saturation vapor pressure at 2 meter height. So, you take from 1.5 to 2 meter height calculated for daily time step because if you are doing it for 24 hours 
So, you will do you know assuming that this is a kind of constant over a period of time every hour or every half an hour or every 2 hours and it will depend upon you know you will calculate it for daily time step. Mean actual vapor pressure, so this is the actual vapor pressure, this is a saturated vapor pressure at that height, ut is the velocity because that causes the evaporation from the second stage. So, first stage we saw you know this part 408 rn etcetera deals with 40 rn etcetera etcetera deals with this situation, it deals with here evaporation at this level and this portion is the second part. So, the we are taking the saturation pressure here and the actual pressure there. So, that difference will cause evaporation occurring at you know from here to there evaporation occurring right. So, that is that is the two part of this equation that is the two part of the equation. So, this is a constant and this is another constant. Now, this divided by the psychrometric constant and ratio of these two resistances ratio of these two resistances. So, you can see that this is the radiation falling in direct radiation, G is the soil heat flux the amount of heat radiation going through the soil, T is the mean temperature at 2 meter height you know this is where it is coming, this is saturated vapor pressure at 1.5 to 2 meter height, this actual air pressure at partial vapor pressure at 1.5 to 2.5 meter height, this slope of saturation line and this psychrometric constant these are some constants depending upon time step you take for calculation because you will calculate at different times assuming time step to be constant during that period of time how much evaporation has occurred. So, it, it and then sum it up for the whole day millimeter per day that is what you will be interested in and this values can be 34 ideal condition or can be some other values. So, you see one can find out the E T 0. Then k values are available on table, k values are available on table you know k values are available on table. So, this separate processes whereby water is lost on one hand from the soil surface by evaporation and on the other hand from the crop by transpiration that is what it is and this k c. So, the k c value is we know for different types of crop or plants for assuming the plant we can assume our plant supposing it is 3 a hemispherical surface right approximately because tree leaves generally forms that is kind of an umbrella shape thing. So, you can approximate this to a say 5 meter radius 5 meter diameter or 10 meter diameter etcetera etcetera and for the given type of plants you have not really crop the multiplying factor will vary and this whole list is available for different types of plants. For example, I mean or trees supposing you want to convert it in into trees of the kind of you know like uh, like uh, um, banyan tree the values are available. So, these values people have actually people have actually obtained the botan botanical you know people by with botanical bag botanic background and things like that or agricultural background they have. So, this you can multiply standard one you can calculate out and this is what you find out right. Now, for a single tree the volume of rate evaporation is obtained by multiplying the crown area. So, this is the crown area the crown area will be simply pi d square by 2 because we assume it to be hemispherical right hemispherical right ok it is pi d square by 4 pi r square. So, pi d square so pi d square by 2 that is what it would be. So, crown area by the you know so you get E T C standardized value E T C multiplying by crop factor and moisture factor and all those this multiple so volume of you can actually find out K C E T C A C right. So, for example, the example that case we will take later on Humayun's tomb let us say uh, where one could count the number of trees. If you see that I have uh, some Google photograph of the same I will show you uh, the actual tomb is there surrounding that there are number of trees of different sizes some 5 meter some 10 meters. So, one could count them and once you have counted, counted them 
for the whole day you want to find out how much is the moisture that will evaporate from the tree top from the crown. So, that is given by this formula. Now, you cannot do hand calculation may not be very easy, remembering the formula also may not be very easy, remembering the formula is also may not be very easy, but you can write an excel sheet. So, easily you can actually calculate out. Now, once you have calculated that what you have found out the evaporation that is occurring, evaporation that is evaporation that is occurring here, you know evaporation that is occurring actually evaporation that is occurring at this level. Now, this will not remain there, this will get distributed all over the space. So, you have a kind of an space that you are concerned about, consider that total space, it will be a three dimensional space, could be a rectangular parallelopiped, because there will be number of trees and then you want to find out what would be the relative humidity at every element in that area, right. So, that is that you can do. Now, this can be done using what is called Gaussian dispersion model which a people in air pollution use, you know. When they have a steady situation of a chimney, let us say vertical one, a chimney, the pollutant or smoke moves along, it is assumed that it actually moves in a with circular cross section, it expands and moves in a circular cross section. So, if you look at the direction of movement, take a normal path, I mean normal direction, it will be circular cross section. And you assume that in all both the direction, it is normally distributed. The concentration is maximum at the center and symmetrically distributed about the center like Gaussian distribution. Okay. So, this is Gaussian dispersion model, that is what is it. So, pollutant concentration. So, in our case, this can be our tree with the height h s, this is x direction, this is z direction, this is y direction. For you know for a given tree and therefore, at a given distance given height compared to this or given distance in x and y direction using Gaussian dispersion model, we can find out what will be the moisture content right for a three dimensional box kind of an area where this might be my tree height, there are number of trees and that I find out at any point I can find out the moisture content from a single tree. I can sum up for all the trees to find out what is the you know how much will be the dispersion of the moisture vapor from the tree to that from all the trees I can find out. Now, this moisture vapor actually you know would reduce down the temperature because it would it would be it have taken the latent heat of evaporation. So, on an average basis total temperature reduction you can find out because the amount of moisture that has evaporated some total of all of them divided by latent heat of evaporation will be the average temperature change in the whole space right average temperature change in the whole space and the moisture that is added actually is change the relative humidity will change the relative humidity right. So, that is what it is. So, Gaussian plume model is applied and the formula is something like this. Concentration or in our case it will be mass of the moisture per unit volume at any point x y z in any point in this three dimensional box is given by Q is the rate of emission from the source that is from my tree crown, crown, crown of the tree that I have already calculated using Penman Montiet model. These are standard deviation that means you know this, this spread in x n y direction this will be 3 sigma, this will be 3 sigma, this will be 3 sigma, this will be 3 sigma x n y direction. So, the spreads these values are actually available, values are available for different types of pollutants how they will spread actually these are available. So, sigma x sigma z u is the air velocity mean horizontal speed to the depth of the plume horizontal air speed right given a direction of the wind and this is z is the 
z is a height in z direction h is a h is a height of the tree from base to trunk base of trunk to the center of the foliage that means half of the crown you know center of the foliage you will take so you can assume the tree to be a stack projection of height h which increases vapor at a steady rate so this is valid for steady state situation constantly evaporating at the same rate moisture is constantly evaporating at the same rate right so this is valid for steady state situation which releases vapor at a steady rate calculated by using the model for evapor transpiration and once you have done that that any point you can find out right you can find out any point you can find out so we we'll just look at this since this process of evapor transpiration involves evaporation of water from stomata of leaf is assumed that it is to be adiabatic into the air the wet bulb temperature remains same because at saturation the wet bulb temperature will be evaporating only the humidity increases that's what we are saying and in this the air loses sensible heat by the amount of equal to the latent heat gain the process of calculating etc okay so one can one can obtain from this website the you know the model 